Hello everyone and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Today it's time for the grand finals of the ESL Open Cup Europe number 82. And because of that actually I think it's only fair to introduce the Red Terran player first. So spawning here in the top right hand corner, playing with the Red Terran SCVs from Germany, we have none other than Hero Marine. Now this event, by the fans, like two years ago, was renamed to the Big Gabe Weekly. Because this man over here was winning them pretty much every single week. However, then his opponent came around. <laughs> he wasn't as good two years ago as he is right now, but playing here with the blue SCVs from France, we're looking at Clem's main command center. Now, just now, while I was preparing for this cast for just a little bit, I had a quick look at the Liquipedia results to let you know how many both of these have won at this point, and I did a stupid thing. <laughs> it's early in the morning, okay? Um, I accidentally spoiled myself for this one, which... <sighs> it's a bit stupid. Anyways, <laughs> so when this particular series was played, Mr. Hero Marine had won 30 of the ESL Open Cups and Clem had won 26. Which uh, is pretty ridiculous how close it is. So 30 and 26, I actually thought that Hero Marine was quite a bit more ahead uh, than just, uh, yeah, just four. So we'll see how this one is going to play out. There's no denying that Clem, of course, is ridiculously good these days. I think FQ, I think if you were to ask most of the StarCraft 2 viewers and pro gamers who the best Terran player in Europe is, they're pretty much all going to say Clem. However, don't sleep on Hero Marine because the guy, even though he's been around in StarCraft 2 for over a decade now, he's been playing ever since I remember, which I guess means 2010 because I've been playing for a long time. Uh, he's, he's always been very good. Like, he's been steadily improving. He actually recently announced he may very well be going back to university soon. So he's going to be playing StarCraft 2 maybe a little bit less. Which, yeah, I guess will only help out Clem? I'm not sure. We'll see. Are we doing a little bit of Supply Depot micro? <laughs> not bad at all. Either way, it's going to be a Terran versus Terran. Map number one is 2000 Atmos. TVT, of course. A very difficult matchup to play well. One little mistake. Can cost you quite a lot. Now here, Marine. Uh, he's already planted down the factory inside of his main base. Reactor coming up as well, so only a single Reaper on his hand. Or his end, rather. I, I think he's gonna proxy a starport? Yeah, we see that every once in a while, where you pop out a couple of Hellions, and then you try to bring them towards the Medivac that gets built out of a starport. Factory is done, and indeed, right here, outside of the main base of Clem. We do see that starport coming up. Is Clem, uh, is Clem gonna scout this? So he's actually keeping his Reapers a little bit closer to home. He knows that his opponent obviously also will likely have a Reaper out, so... You know, he wants to intercept that if it tries to get a little bit adventurous. Clem going for the more conventional start here, so three Reapers together with two Hellions is ridiculously powerful. Command Center is coming here for him as well, and he is gonna go for that Starport. Whereas that Command Center for Hero Marine is a little bit later. So some small deviations here, but broadly speaking, we're getting to a very similar end goal. Alright, so here's the hit squad. Clem will get across the map and we'll find out that it's only gonna be one Reaper here from the opponent. I guess he will be met though by uh, more Hellions than he probably expects. The problem is, yeah, there's a Medivac building already. How easy is it gonna be for Hero Marine to get those units across? Oh. If you lose one of those units right now, that would obviously be a disaster. Additional Hellions pop out of the factory as well. He's gonna try and do a little bit of micro. Reaper stays alive for now. Both players taking a lot of damage. Nice control right there by Clem, but he may very well end up losing both of the Hellions here uh, as a result. And this little skirmish over here can just cost you the game, right? Like, if you're a weaker Terran player, this little skirmish over here when micro better by your opponent can just be game over. Either way, here go the Hellions. They're inside of the little Medivac already. Ooh, a tech lab is a follow-up too. So Hero Marine is definitely gonna pile on the pressure for a little while longer. Either that or he could like rally a Raven back home, I suppose, to try and keep this up. Either way, Clem doesn't know about these Hellions. He sees them at this point. Luckily for him, one of the Hellions was killed. So they can't be uh, one-shotting the SCVs as effectively. So four workers end up going down. Yeah, is he just gonna make a... Okay, he is just gonna make a Raven. I was gonna say, maybe you want to go for a Banshee or something, but Ravens are so helpful in the early and mid game of TVT, and actually also in the late game, that you kinda, you kinda have to have them. So, hmm, it's gonna be a long rally back home if you're gonna send it all the way that way. Alright, so even though this might not be the perfect start right here for Clem, I think it's fine. At least this is a lot more comfortable, right? 
So he's going to follow the Raven of his own up with a Viking as well. So he's going to be able to start dealing, of course, with that Medivac of the opponent. And if that uh, Raven over here decides to get adventurous, he just keeps miss... Uh, or not misrallying it, but re-rallying it. Yeah. Okay, if this one decided to get adventurous as well, he could chase that down very easily. So good move right there by the Red Terran player to send it back home. Third CC starts up here for Clem. Obviously had his natural a little bit quicker as well. And even though we had some fireworks to start off this series, I think we're just transitioning towards a relatively normal game right now. Here Marine even now remaking an additional starport at home, just in case. Alright, so real quick, when it comes to the Ravens, Marines, Siege Tanks, and Vikings, they're all pretty self-explanatory. Um, Cyclones are a little bit more complex, but Ravens are definitely... Definitely the important unit in TVT. You see them in TVP as well, but in Terran versus Terran, they're super powerful. So, first off, they have a little auto turret. You can drop it on the ground, deals a bunch of damage, it times out after a little while, or it can be killed, right? Secondly, it's got a skill called the Interference Matrix. That's the one in the center right there, which basically allows you to temporarily disable a unit. So, most importantly, in Terran versus Terran, that usually gets thrown on the siege tanks. So basically you can throw it on a siege tank of your opponent and then it's temporarily not firing, which is huge. And now last but not least, we also have the anti-armor missile. Anti-armor missile basically reduces armor and even can put it in the negative of your uh, opponent's units. So this is, ooh, here Marine, hello. <laughs> uh, you can basically throw it on one of your opponent's units and then they will be taking additional damage. A couple of the units do get caught out on the map right now actually. Ooh. Anyway, so the Ravens are absolutely critical in this matchup. You can kind of see them as like, uh, you can kind of see them like, for example, as like sentries, or maybe even High Templar as, as a Protoss player, right? Zerk obviously also has spellcasters like Queens, but maybe Queens are not as important. Ah, I mean, Queens are easier to replace, I suppose, than a Raven, right? Queens are still very important, but uh, yeah. It's very critical for both players to keep those Ravens alive. So the problem is if you are both having, say you both have like five siege tanks, Right? And your opponent has no ravens and you have two. You can just stim in and disable a bunch of your opponent's siege tanks and then the fight will go easily in your favor. Air Marine. Hello. Wakey wakey. Alright. Three uh, Cyclone. Couple units here get killed. Liquid Clem takes a nice little supply lead at this point. Third CC on the side of the blue player is already mining, whereas Air Marine is securing his expansion right now. Darren vs. Darren, though, is also difficult to push in. At this point, we are talking five siege tanks, though, here for Clem. A couple more ravens, though, for Hero Marine. Okay, there's the anti-armor missile. Anti-armor uh, anti missile can also affect friendly units, by the way. So, you gotta be very careful with throwing that one around. Oh, he's trying to kill... Ooh, <laughs> he really wants to kill a couple of those uh, ravens of the opponent, but... Not really happening. Yeah, Marine thinking about going around the back. Would not mind seeing some repair right here on the few in the front. Okay, well now they're in the back. I guess that's a little bit better. Yeah, smartly enough right now, Clem decides to turn back around. I think it makes sense. Proxy starport has been found, so he's going to use this now, I guess, for a little bit of scouting. You will see that his opponent is adding on additional mid-game production, which is really not too surprising at this point. 1-1 one, one upgrades here as well for... Uh, for Hero Marine, a little bit later than the opponent. Now, this bothers me a bit. <laughs> so, obviously, this is the SCV that finished building the engineering bay, and then it, you know, RNG'd itself. It randomly got into this little choke point. Can we please bring a medevac over here and save the... the worker? No, we're not... we're not going to. Oh, well. Let him grab himself another siege tank. That siege tank count is starting to look a little bit, uh... Yeah, a little bit tricky right now for Hero Marine, though. Three versus seven is really not what you're looking for. And even though they can be disabled, right? <laughs> Interference Matrix is not a cheap skill to cast. Alright. So, Vikings here actually get sniped right now, as Hero Marine also takes that supply advantage in the air. Okay, there's one. Micros it. Sends it a little bit further back. So it can still move around, but it basically won't do much here for at least a little bit uh, a little bit longer. Dude, you're not gonna push in that. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> These siege tanks fire once, and his entire ground army is gone. 
Clem does have a nice little upgrade lead too. It's not huge, but um, you can see here that his NG base have already started up 2-2, whereas his opponents are still finishing up the first upgrades. Quite significant as well when uh, the fights happen and you have obviously two more upgrades than your opponent. Absolutely makes a world of difference. Feels like in this game so far though, we're kind of just testing the waters, right? Neither player really wants to commit. There's definitely some mutual respect going on. You don't really want to take any uh, unnecessary gambles at this point. Heroin actually a little bit late right there on the combat shield, but luckily he did notice that he forgot that upgrade. Or delayed it. I, I doubt that he probably wants it, or that he wants it this late though, but uh... It's one of the most common mistakes you still even see at the pro level as well, where the combat shield research is just, yeah, not acquired. So combat shields basically just give the marines additional hit points. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but once again, they can lift through an additional siege tank shot. So, you know, <laughs> it adds up very quickly. Yeah, marine posturing right here with the ravens. Clem is just going for the, the bread and butter army, right? This is the army we saw in Wings of Liberty. Siege tanks, medevacs, and marines. Trying to get the siege tanks up towards the high ground. Here, Marine actually has one tank over there, which I actually quite like. Soffing up a bunch of those tanks. Marines uh, barely get here. I don't think I like this, man. Yeah, so here's the interference matrix. Just, oh my god, pretty much all of the tanks right now from Clem are disabled. Marines stim down the ramp. Auto turrets get dropped down as well. And I think here, Marine is going to clean this up easy peasy. <laughs> okay. Well, who needs battle cruisers, right? When you have ravens. Ravens are insanely powerful. And now all of a sudden that siege tank count is not looking nearly that hot. <laughs> Alright. Couple marines. On the right side of the map just to make sure that uh, Gabe is not going to go for some cheeky... Cheeky drop harass. But honestly he doesn't really do that all too much as it is. He's very fond of just going through the center of the map. Yeah, ravens are super good, man. So there's no ravens available at all here for Clem. Auto turrets do obviously take a bunch of energy. So, no interference matrix uh, remaining at this point, but... Right now that he's got the air lead, he can also start adding on the liberators too. Yep. With the anti-armor, uh, or sorry, with the anti-ground attack right there from those lips, it's absolutely huge though, but the cold cave here is in favor of Clem, who decides to pull the boys as well from their mineral lines. He's trying to target fire down whatever he can. A couple of siege tanks in the back will still live, but 13 SCVs end up going down, and Clem does deflect the army. Good pull right there. During all of this, by the way, Clem also secured the 4th CC. So even though he did lose a lot of workers, right now with a scan, he also confirms that his opponent was effectively going for a 3 base all-in. This was something that Hero Marine wanted to win with. Now he's lost all of his ravens too, so all of a sudden this is looking once again like a good position for Clem to be in. Your Marine does grab the uh, the upgrade lead. Liberators going around the back. Don't kill this one, okay? This one has a story to tell. <laughs> Please don't kill that guy. Ay ay ay. Yeah, this liberator is getting way too much work done. It's gotta get gunned down eventually, but already. Definitely paying for itself. Alright, here Marine starts to pile on the multitasking right now. Units coming in right now to the natural expansion. Clem just transitioning towards more Ravens. Free siege tank over here. Oh, sorry. I'm a curious man. What what did they say? PP, let me know when you're ready and let me restart so you don't lose time. Hmm, sorry, ready, go, go. Ah, that wasn't that wasn't very spicy. I'm sorry, that wasn't very spicy. Either way, here we're in right now, trying to break his opponent's natural expansion while simultaneously pushing the planetary fortress here on the left side of the map. This is a problem though, yeah, a whole lot of the units here in blue were pulled back to the net. All of this will be cleaned up eventually, I think, but 16 SCVs end up going down. Planetary Fortress over here is at the very least stopping the advancement of this army of Hero Marine for now. It's buying him a bunch of time. This is, by the way, the energy upgrade right there. For the Ravens, inside of that tech lab on that starport. So Clem trying to build up his air army as well. The problem is when you lose that air domination, right? When you start losing the air wars. Those Liberators become such a problem. 
right? So once you have like more Vikings than your opponent and maybe a couple more Ravens as well, you can start adding in Liberators and then the Liberators can force your opponent to unseat the tanks. It's very annoying. Hero Marine, dude, just piling on the pressure. I love this. So aggressive. This whole game long. Command Center in a little bit of trouble. Still though, <laughs> Clem is uh, producing a healthy amount of siege tanks here during all of this. Okay, good splits as well there by Big Gabe. Nicely done. Still being annoying, by the way, with the Marines inside of the main base. Metavex are nowhere to be seen anymore. Looks like he is gonna pull back for now, but maybe just to try and kill this planetary. And at that point, there's really not gonna be that much remaining, actually, for Hero or, or sorry, for, yeah, for, for Big Gape. No, no, for, for Clem, sorry. It's early in the morning, okay? Some interference matrixes of his own right now. Planetary Fortress. No. Oh, it's the old main base. So Gabe actually decided to go for the uh, orbital command right there at the top. Once again, SCVs are pulled away from the mineral line. 20 more of those bad boys will get picked off. But at least the base still lives. And Clem definitely still has a decent amount of eco. He's got a lot of command centers. Here, Marine. Ready, uh, like his name is Hero Marine, but I feel like he's not really caring about his Marines very much in this game at all, man. He's just brute forcing the problem. He's like, you know what? Take care of it. Just go die. Poor guy. I wouldn't want to be a Marine at the very least in Hero Marine's army in this game is what I'm trying to get at. Liberator to the left would be nice, I guess. But I, uh, I don't believe he's got any of those left over. Nope. Clem's basically just defending, right? Trying his very best to get that economical advantage so he can eventually win. Oh, this is annoying. <laughs> Liberators could be good, but a couple Marines apparently can do the trick reasonably well. It's an orbital command over here, though, so that's much easier to harass. Air Marine, once again, coming in from multiple angles. Alright. Anti-armor missile, making it easier for those blue marines to clean all of this up. At this point, Hero Marine is two upgrades ahead of the opponent too, so that's yeah, quite significant in those marine versus marine wars. Unless they have anti-armor missile on them. Third command center now also floating on over towards a new base. I love that though. Just going to, like three CCs and continuously expanding that way, it's pretty cool. Wouldn't be surprised to see this one going on over to the left as well in a little bit. Widowmine gets cleaned up. Both players, though, kind of broke. So they're just going back to siege tanks and marines. No high-tech units anymore. Still, though, the army here for uh, for Gabe is looking much bigger, right? Yeah, we're talking 93 army supply versus 60, well, something. Both of them losing a lot of stuff. Army here on the left side does get cleaned up, but at the same time, Hero Marine is taking care of the, uh, the expansion over here. Might even be able to target fire down the command center, and indeed it does go down. Glemdo wins the fight over here. Obviously, there's no planetaries anywhere here for Hero Marine, so these expos should be harassed pretty easily. A couple of siege tanks come up as well. Marines, though, running very low in health, and there's no uh, energy really in these medivacs either. Natural expansion here and some trouble for Clem. Forced to lift up the CC, maybe bring it on over towards the main base. But I think with all the relentless aggression over the course of the last, well, I want to say like 17 minutes, right? He's been doing it for the better part of this game. I believe eventually Hero Marine is inching out ahead. Little traits that are going slightly better for him here and there. Obviously, we had that big Raven situation in the earlier stages of this game. But he's just been piling on the pressure ever since. Right now, if you look at the supply count, it doesn't lie. That newly acquired base right here at the 3 o'clock position is bringing him a lot of additional income. It's not really been harassed at all. Obviously, he can also relatively easily drop mules and whatnot at this point in the game. 12 o'clock position also looking nice and healthy. Oh. Forcing the siege tanks right now to do some friendly fire to each other. <laughs> GG is cold and game number one goes in favor of the German. Alrighty, game number two. We find ourselves on Oxide. 
Now, by the way, we are once again in that in that weird period during the premiere events of StarCraft 2 where there's not that many replays available to go ahead and cast. I mean, there's still a decent amount, luckily. Uh, there's quite a few smaller online events happening. Either way, in case you're, uh, you're unfamiliar, basically DreamHack Fall is currently happening, and the way that it works is that over the course of like... I think it's like a two and a half month event or something. Basically, there's qualifiers first off in the European region and the North American region and Latin America and Australia and all the different regions in StarCraft 2. Uh, those events just on their own, by the way, are fantastic. But basically, they all seed into one season finals. And I believe that that one takes place in like... I think like three weeks or so if you're watching this video on the day that it goes up. Either way, they essentially do not release the replay pack until the entire event is wrapped up. And obviously, the top level... You know, StarCraft 2 pros in general all participate in that. And since there's a lot of money on the line, usually they don't really participate in that many other events while that's happening. So, for example, someone like Serral. I mean, it's not like we would see him in the ESL Open Cup in the first place, right? He doesn't really play in these. Um, but yeah, I'm probably not going to be able to cast another game of his until... Uh, well, unless he participates in something else, but I highly doubt it. I mean, it makes sense, right? If you're here to win like $100,000, I can imagine you're not really keen on showing your best strategies in like a $250, you know, weekly cup, right? You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's probably going to be at least another month or so until I'll be able to cast uh, another one of his games. And the same would go for quite a few of these other pro gamers, too. But, of course, I'll try my very best. I mean, <laughs> these two guys are, are ridiculously good and they're still playing in this one, too. So, I don't really know, man. There seems to be a different mindset when it comes to the pro gamers. I mean... It's not like Clem is gonna show us something, you know, that's completely unheard of in Terran versus Terran, and it's not like he's gonna completely change the meta in one of these online cups, but... Yeah, there's something to be said for not showing any of your games for at least a little while, right? Just to make you a little bit less predictable. I think I would probably play the same way. I would like to think at least. If I, hypothetically speaking, would be even remotely as good as Serral, I like to think that I would also, you know, be at least a little bit secretive about it. It's the way that a lot of the top tier guys play the game. Either way, nothing funky right here on Oxide. Oxide, of course, a very good map for siege tanks once again. There's this nice little ramp, for example, that leads down from the natural expansion. So just defending your natural expo is pretty easy. There's also a jump up pad over here in the back. Apparently, uh, Clem right here is going to patrol back and forth over here. He's going to be the one opening up with some Hellions this time around. There's the starport, uh, the starport though, coming up inside of the main base. So nothing all too crazy. Starboard as well being made on the other side of the map. Was that early? Probably not. <laughs> so this is the, the money laundering scheme of StarCraft 2, okay? So it turns out, right, mules have a limited amount of trips that they can make. They will always make the same amount of trip, or the same amount of trips, rather, just because they're alive for a certain amount of time. Now, it turns out that on some of the maps, if you drop it on certain mineral patches, it's gonna die on its return trip. So it's gonna, like, you know, time out as it is on the return with the minerals that it just harvested. Those minerals, they're gone. It's magical. They're, they're not on the ground, they're not on a mineral patch, they're not on the command center, they're nowhere. I don't really know exactly how it works, man, but just don't tell the IRS, okay? <laughs> <laughs> or whatever local uh, internal, uh, what is it? Internal revenue? S s I don't know. System? System? I don't say. I don't know. In Dutch, we just call it the Belasting Dienst, okay? Just don't tell the Belasting Dienst is what I'm trying to get at. Because those minerals, they mysteriously disappeared. Alrighty. Couple of marauders inside of a plane. Bunch of Hellions ready to go across the map. And this marauder push, actually, is kind of neat. He's already finished up the concussive shells upgrade. Meaning that... Ooh, oh, oh, God. Hero Maria, I think you want that one. Yeah, meaning that... Oh, don't fly into it, though, Clem. <laughs> that would be bad. Um, meaning that, uh, yeah, he's gonna be able to slow down the units. Hello. Okay. Well, that's the medevac gone. Is he gonna be able to defend this regardless? Or, or sorry, no, he's not... No. I was gonna say, is he still gonna be able to deal damage regardless? But medevac got picked off right away. And Hero Marine uh, didn't even really seem to do that much there. He just kind of stood. <laughs> Microing a little bit here and there. Getting a bit of damage done with the Raven as well. Dropping the auto turret. But other than that, that was about it. Okay. So Clem decided to go for a little bit of early game pressure. Not really getting too much done. 
Was that a huge commitment? Not really. But we do have a deviation right now as a follow-up, though. So, Clemens decided to go for a third command center, whereas Hero Marine is spending his money on additional barracks. So you can see right here that the starport apparently uh, being used here the entire time. It's actually kind of sad. All it's been good for so far is making a bunch of add-ons and then producing one unit, and then it's just making more add-ons. Either way, uh, it's constructed a bunch of them, and now he's going to be able to start up Stimpak and a whole lot of Marines. This will definitely open up the opportunity for Hero Marine to go for a push in a little bit, but he will need to deal damage with that one. So the one that Clem just went for, I mean, he still traded out some units, right? Wasn't the best uh, the best engagement in the world, but at least he got some work done. Um, this follow-up push that Hero Marine is going for right now becomes much more important. Not the Pokemon you would uh, anticipate when you go into the high grass <laughs> or the tall grass couple of Hellions and a Cyclone ready to intercept whatever. This could actually really backfire though. So the standard is to go for the additional command center right after the 111. Clem seems to be going for a push while simultaneously expanding. Hero Marine right now scouts out as well that the units are missing. There's the third CC but this army right now for Gabe is way bigger. 20 Marines versus 6. 4 Siege Tanks versus 3. If Clem decides to push it could really backfire. Well, at this point, he should also kind of know, right? So he's scouting right here on the left side with a Reaper, and he's scouting over here, I guess, with his main army. He's expecting the CC to come flying down because his own CC just did the exact same thing. Okay, well, here we go. A little bit of a move forward. Siege Tank takes a lot of damage. Is it going to get picked off? Oh my god, it will. Slowest Siege Tank kill ever. But still, I don't really see uh, Clem pushing up this ramp. I don't think he should, anyway. At the same time, yep, there's 16 Marines on the other side of the map. This command center can actually be killed. Yep, this command center can actually be targeted down. And now that ramp that Hero Marine has at home is going to be absolutely phenomenal as well. Okay, huge leap now for the German. Right now, we're basically in identical situations. Clem is going to try and push up this ramp. He does have a couple of auto turrets available with his Ravens, but I mean... Auto turrets fighting auto turrets, as long as the siege tanks at least live, uh, two of them get picked off. Nope, he lifts up the marines, decides to drop them once again onto the siege tanks. And at this point, since there's nothing left to support the army, GG is cold. And here our marine wins a very quick game number two. Yeah, a bit of a... Bit of a rough game, I think, right there for Klim. It's not that he missed Macroat, it's not that he missed Microat. He just kind of misjudged the situation, right? <laughs> when you have that fog of war and you can never really see exactly what your opponent is up to. Maybe he thought his opponent decided to morph in the orbital command in the main base and that the CC was still gonna go down, right? Anyways, here Marine basically uh, had like 16 more Marines probably than his opponent there. Because of that quick second and third barracks. The army was kind of identical and obviously defender's advantage in this matchup is huge. Just, you know... The fact that your siege tanks are already sieged, and your opponent has to get in range of those siege tanks first and then siege up, it's... Yeah, it's it's not great. So you always get the first shot in if you are the defender. Clem ended up losing the third CC there, and uh, it kind of forced him into an all-in position. Alright, so that means we're already at match point right here on Lightshade. Ooh, alright. Here we're showing a little bit of build order variety. Going for the double barracks opener, sometimes we see the second barracks on the other side of the map. Doesn't necessarily have to be though. I actually like this variant quite a bit where you just kind of put it in your main base. You can still pump out more units than your opponent early on. But if they miss control right, if you get one little advantage early, you can definitely push for the victory straight away. I don't really expect that to be the case though from someone like Klim. In general, these guys control their first five units extremely well. But obviously mistakes can be made and... Uh, I mean, this is European server, right? It's Europe going up against Europe. It would have been a little bit harder to predict if it would be like, you know, Europe going up against South Korea and then they uh, they both play with like North American ping, right? They both play with like 150 ping. It's a little bit harder to, uh, to pull that off. But, yeah. With as little ping as possible, I don't really expect it to be much of an issue. <laughs> All right. So Clem is going to be able to get that factory started already, whereas two of those Reapers are being produced on the other side of the map. So far in this series, both players have been pretty defensive with their Reaper play. 
If Clem decides to send it across right, if he decides to jump it up here, it's dead. Because then there would, be, uh, there would be a couple of Reapers waiting for him. Now, here Marine also scouting out. There's no way, right? Here Marine is scouting right now for proxy barracks. Proxy factories, whatever he can find. But that would be a little bit extreme when you're 2-0 behind. You need massive balls. I don't know if Clem has those. I I'm just saying, you know, like it. Being 2-0 behind and then proxying two barracks on the other side of the map, that would be next level. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised though. Someone like Maru would probably go for it, right? Anyways, SCV gets killed. I was building a CC on the low ground. A little bit annoying. A new space construction vehicle will be pulled from the main. So in the lore of StarCraft, by the way, SCVs are absolutely massive, right? So like... Basically in like the little top section of the SCV, a guy is supposed to sit who's like, you know, controlling everything in like an exosuit kind of thing, right? They must be way bigger than like... Oh god, okay. They must be way bigger than... Okay, what? <laughs> they must be way bigger than a marine at the very least. They are a little bit bigger, but... StarCraft 2's multiplayer is not perfectly to scale. Motherships are literally floating cities. It, it <laughs> they would be uh, taking up the majority of the map if they were to the real size. So a couple of those grenades hurt a few of the Hellions. It's not ideal. Gotta be very careful with those though. Oh god, okay. Speaking of being careful with those. <laughs> one of them gets rallied across the map. I think it was probably on the same control group as these units over here. Either way, Hero Marine at this point knows where the army of his opponent is located and he decides to go in, kill four of those workers. That's quite a lot. Careful though, lining up the Hellions could be, or lining up, well, anything I guess, but especially uh, the Reapers here would be an absolute disaster. Tries to micro this to the best of his abilities. A lot of the blue units right now though are rolling down the ramp as well and this is starting to look really good for the Frenchman. Yep. Sure, he ended up losing a bunch of his workers, which is not ideal. But the eight Reapers right now are gone. Can Hero Marine actually defend this at home right now? He's going for a Cyclone. So Cyclone is, of course, very nice when it comes to dealing with small armies. But, like, the Reaper Grenades can definitely still mess with it for quite a bit. How much damage can Clem right now do on the other side of the map? There's the Cyclone. Uh. And this is where the majority of, like... The latter games end, right? Like, this is why people don't like playing TVT very much. Well, at least some people do. Ooh, medevac for the rescue. I like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is uh, this is where a lot of the latter games just simply end. You gotta be so on point with your early game unit control. I mean, let me put it like this. If you or me would be facing off against either Clem or Hero Marine in a latter game, we'd probably get absolutely destroyed within the first five minutes. I mean, unless you're a top-tier Terran player, but... It's going to be difficult. Follow-up is going to be relatively standard, though. Hello. Okay. Don't know what that was all about. Couple of Reapers still on the other side of the map. Going to do a little bit of scouting. Always nice. Probably nothing that he didn't already know, though. Yeah. <laughs> He knows that there's going to be uh, factory units out. And he knows that there's likely going to be starport units out soon as well. He's obviously already seen the medivac, so he knows that there already is one. He knew that there were a bunch of uh, Reapers early on, too. So, definitely has put one and one together. And he knows at this point that it's going to be a double barrack start. Clem still decides to get a little bit aggressive here, okay. Feels a bit scary to me when you know your opponent has one more production structure, but... He knows more about this matchup than I do. Maybe it's because he wants to capitalize on the situation from earlier? Two siege tanks, by the way, in this bottom medivac. Yeah. Sieging them up in a very curious position, but I actually kind of like it. Okay, a couple of the units right here scout out exactly what's going on. Raven with high energy here as well for Mr. Clem. Siege tank over there can indeed hit that one mineral field, which can deal some splash damage. Oh god, is he really going to go for a full-on counterattack right now? Hero Marine just loaded all the units into Medivex and is going to go for the offensive, but I feel like this might be a bit of a risk. There's such a huge army right now for Clem. What is this? No, he decides to return back home? Whoa, okay. Maybe he didn't realize how much that was for the blue player here. 
Either way, right as this happens, though, Clem realizes, wait a second, he's not actually gone to the other side of the map. Instead, he's gone back home. 22 SCVs end up going down. Hero Marine loses all of his economy here in the natural. But at least the units were cleaned up? That was some that was some crazy decision making there. So I think Hero Marine thought there was only a small army right there for Clem, but he scanned it, didn't he? He scanned it, so he knew that there was a huge army. Either way, he loaded all of his units into Medivex, went across the other or went across the map, pretended like he was gonna go to the other side. Clem saw the units leaving, unseached the tanks, and then all of a sudden these units came back home. We're now talking a huge army lead right here for the German player. Huge eco lead for the Frenchman. Eco leads are nice and all, assuming you can kill your opponent's army. Clem at this point is also not mining, who decides to pull a couple of the boys here as well. A lot of SCVs are gonna be sacrificed for the greater good. <laughs> 22? Really? We both lose 22 workers? What a mess. All right. And now, after eight minutes of skirmishing, game's pretty much even. <laughs> game's pretty much even. Yeah. No, actually, let's have a look. So both of them have Stimpak. Combat shield starts up. Important not to forget that one. Plus one weapons here is actually a significant advantage here for Gabe. Clement does have a couple more workers, though, so there's that. Hmm. One hero marine siege tank over here. <laughs> it doesn't have enough vision. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think you need to go home, my man. Go home, siege tank, you're drunk. Stop embarrassing yourself, you gotta get killed. Mm. What a scrappy game. What are you doing here, Mr. Siege Tank? Go home! Good. You listen to me. Good guy, Siege Tank. I appreciate that. I still can't believe Hero Marines. Yeah, he scanned, he saw all of the units of Clem were here. He loaded everything into a medevac, flew it over here, and then he's like, wait a second, I'm gonna lose everything, and he sent them back home. Then he caught the Siege Tanks as they were unseached. There's no way that was planned, right? <sighs> Maybe. There's no way. You can't predict your opponent to unseach the tanks. What if Clem would have scanned? I mean, Marine or here, Marine just like scanned, so that should probably give him most of the info. Oh my god! <laughs> what did here? Uh, what did Hero Marine have for breakfast before they played this series? He doesn't go for a lot of drop play in general. Like, Clem is always, like, a lot more nimble when it comes to his drop play, right? He's a little bit more beyond esque with that. Medivac scooting around the edges of the map, trying to fight at two, three, four different places at once. Hero Marine always more of a bulldozer. <laughs> Usually likes to go for, like, a, four, uh, a full frontal assault. Wouldn't be surprised if he, uh, you know, just loads everything into Medivacs and then go for the... That's what he's been doing, right? It's kind of funny. Oh. That one uh, lifts just so he can go tell the other Vikings. Jokes on him, there's none. Either way. Oh, actually, no, there's a couple over here, obviously. Either way, Clem does have himself eight Marines now inside of the main base of the opponent. Hero Marine doesn't know of this. So that's nice. Okay. That is really good right here. Yeah, that's really, really nice. So that may very well give this uh, this game an edge right now for the Blue Terran. He's also catching up when it comes to the upgrades by researching two of them at once. Whereas on the other side of the map, Hero Marine is still only researching one. Uh, he doesn't have an armory, so wouldn't mind seeing plus two get started here pretty soon. Here we go again! Look, the Bulldozer Terran, man! Just putting everything into one big attack. I mean, yeah, he's got two Medivacs going in over there as well, but those are reinforcements. It's a very different way of playing. And this is tough to break right now. That being said, there are a lot of Siege Tanks available. At the same time, speaking of Siege Tanks, 
Couple more have just dropped off over in the natural expo. What a messy game. Clem's gonna lose a lot of units here trying to defend his main base, but I think he should be okay eventually. The drop over here did get cleaned up too. Third CC has been acquired by Clem, so he's gonna continue mining for uh, a little while longer, but not much more. God, he's got a lot of workers that are on idle right now though. Clem, that is. Okay, Viking over here landed to try and clean up the siege tank. 37 more workers go down. At the same time, Clem has loaded up more units into a plane. <laughs> Gonna get a siege tank? That's not bad. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. My god, what a miss. I believe they refer to this in the business as a clusterfuck. Uh, I mean, uh, <clears throat> a cluster fudge. Don't think that's the official term for it. Yeah, load him up again. Rinse and repeat, bulldozer Terran. Let's go. Choo choo, mother lover. <laughs> Here I come. <laughs> okay. Clem, try to come up with an elegant solution that doesn't involve all of his, uh, all of his marines dying. Jeez. Yeah, for a man called Hero Marine, he really doesn't care about his marines very much. <laughs> he really does seem to, uh... Think of them as a, a means to an end. Just a tool. To be exploited. Alright, at least he still has the third CC, because the workers aren't looking so hot. My god! Here's more reinforcements getting across the map. This is what Gabe does all the time, and I love it. He's like, okay, this is going quite well. Let me put all my rally points towards the other side of the map and just send in the skeletons. Send in the skeletons. See us there. Oh, okay. This siege tank just barely lives. 12 kills to its name and one hit point. Yeah, he's not done yet. Nah. Needs more Medivac so he can, once again, doom drop them. Okay. So during all of this, Hero Marine has not made a third command center. So he's been on 2cc for a long time. I agree this game looks bad right now. <laughs> he's just gotta continue. <laughs> this game looks bad right now for Clem, but he's got 3ccs and he has a couple of mules, right? Mules in these low eco scenarios especially, look at the income. Despite the fact that he lost everything, at least seemingly, his income is still looking mighty fine. Plus he can obviously lift up one of those command centers and mine the third base relatively easily. Okay, looks like one marine right here was killed by the space construction vehicles themselves. Tank over here will be killed. Same time. Oh, no, 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 the medi- Oh, God! Okay! One little medivac drop right there ended up killing the command center. Well, the marines did, I guess, inside of the medivac drop. Is Clem falling apart under the pressure? No way! Yeah, marine- uh, Hero marine right here. I, I keep trying to say marine lord for some reason. Hero marine! That's a, a different, different Terran player. Also European. Frenchman this time around, though. Anyways, Hero Marine has been piling on the pressure for such a long time that apparently Clem has just been, yeah, a little bit flabbergasted almost, right? Clem has now loaded all of his units, though, towards the other side of the map. But, yeah, Hero Marine catches him at a pretty good moment. Pull back, pull back, pull back. No. Splits come up right here for Hero Marine. He cleans up the siege tanks, and with that, it's game over. Hero Marine ended up winning the ESO Open Cup Europe Grand Finals number 82, 3-0 over Klim. I hope you enjoyed watching the series. If you did, hit that like button down below. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. For now, though, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Don't forget to smile, and I'll see you once again in the next one.